Hey everybody, it's Missy with the Bella Boulevard Creative Team and I have a new layout and a new process video for you today. Our theme for this week is out with the old and in with the new to celebrate the new year. And so we are using up some of our older scraps for our layouts or our projects. And so I pulled out some papers that literally I have just little pieces left, pieces that I've cut out already. Uh, some 12 by 12s that have parts cut out of them. A lot of this is from the Illustrated Faith She Blooms collection, the Whatever is Lovely collection. I'm going to use a little bit of Fresh Market and Color Chaos as well. But these are all some of my favorite papers. They're bright, they're colorful, and those are always my favorite. So what jumped out at me first when I'm thinking of little bits and pieces um, are things on these two pattern papers that I can cut out. And this is going to be my picture. It's black and white, and my daughter's looking over to the left. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to cut out some things and arrange my photo on the lower right-hand side of my paper and then put a bunch of cut pieces kind of coming out of the picture. And when I saw the butterflies, I thought, I'm going to have to fussy cut those out. And then I saw this paper with the words, and I thought, there's my title. So I fussy cut lovely from that beautiful aqua turquoise and white script paper. I'm going to use that as my title. And this is going to take me a while, but I want to cut out a lot of these butterflies because I thought that they would make a very pretty design element and, you know, they would take up a lot of space on a background. It would give it a lot of color. And I just felt like fussy cutting. Sometimes I just feel like cutting things out by hand and not using my cameo and it just takes a little bit of time and patience, but I don't mind fussy cutting. I think it's relaxing and something that's mindless. You can just do it and watch TV or watch other scrapbooking videos on YouTube and uh, just relax. And so I don't mind it. So I'm going to take some time and cut out lots of these butterflies. And I love the color scheme. Here they are. I kind of have an idea arranged here how I think I want it to go on my desk. And I love that uh, there's pinks and reds and oranges and that aqua color, a little bit of that uh, green color, very, very pretty color scheme. So I'm going to use some white cardstock as my background and go over a lot of it with some clear gesso. And then I'm going to pull out the Illustrated Faith watercolor set. These are Shanna's favorites. If you're looking to purchase those, that is what they're called. And their pen paints here in this little container. Very, very cute. And they're very bold and bright colors. I really enjoy working with them. So now that my gesso's dry, I'm going to just do a little bit of background work here. And I usually use, uh, or I a lot of the time, I use spray inks instead of actual watercolors. And they actually go on different than the sprays, as you can see here. The watercolor tends to bead up a little bit more, so I'm adding more water to it. And I'm mixing some of the blues and the greens. I want to try to get that beautiful, deep aqua color that's in the color of that butterfly. And I wind up really liking how this is looking. With It's almost spotted. It's, um, you know, when I use sprays a lot of the times, I get like more solid blobs of color, whereas this is sort of giving me dots. And I really like how that looks. I think it's a nice, different effect. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep playing with the paints. I'm going to do some splattering. I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to use the packaging. And I want this to be sort of just artsy and messy because I'm going to put all those butterflies back on top of it. And I just want to create the idea of these beautiful colors in the background sort of popping around the butterflies and around where the picture is going to go. So I'm going to pull in some pink and just do the same thing and just dab it up. And then when I use a napkin to kind of dry it, it lightens it up because the, the colors and the butterflies are so bold. I don't want the background to overpower that. So I kind of want the background to be a little bit lighter. And it's just an experiment. I kind of just do a little bit, see how it looks, see if I like it, dab a little bit up, add a little bit more. Every time I make a background like this, it's 
it's almost always an experiment. You know, I never know if it's if it's really going to turn out like I imagine it. And so I just keep working at it. And a lot of this gets covered up with the picture and the butterflies. And so you have to keep that in mind when you're making a, a background like this is it looks totally different when you add everything back on top of it. So it's good to kind of bring it all in like this and see where you're at so far and then remove it all and then continue working because that way you know if you've got too much, you know if you need to add more and you need to you know see what color you need to add where and so on and so forth. And at least that's how my brain works. So I thought I needed a little more of the orange. I wanted to add a little bit more of a darker pink, not too much. I didn't want to go too bold But I love how these watercolors are reacting with the clear gesso. And I've learned that they react differently with clear gesso versus white gesso. They just blend differently and the, uh, the water tends to bead up a little more and create little pools on the clear gesso than it does on the white. And they both are great. It just depends on, you know, what you're going for. But I'm loving how this is looking. I love that messy, artsy looking background. And you really can't mess this up. It's just getting down the paint and smudging it how you want and then letting it dry and, and not letting some of the wrong colors mix together. So I'm going to add a little bit of tissue paper behind my picture there just to give it a subtle border or a subtle layer around the edges there. And then I'm going to start playing with the title and all of those butterflies again. And I want them just to kind of look like they, like somebody released them from behind the photo and they just started flying in all different directions. And I put her photo over on the right because she's looking to the left and it looks like she is looking at the butterflies. And I always, if someone's looking to the side, I always like to place the photo to where they're looking across the page or down from down or up, whichever direction the person is looking, because it looks like they're looking at something on the page. And I don't tend to use red a lot, but I love how it looks with this color scheme. It's just, it's so bold and so pretty and I couldn't not use it. And I love how some of the butterflies have red and orange together. And some of them have pink and orange together. It's just a really fun color scheme. So I'm going to add a little dot of glue to each of those and glue them down. And then I thought I want to do a little bit of stitching here. And I want to just take some black stitching thread and just kind of the bodies of all the butterflies. I just want to add a little stitch of the black thread just to kind of give it a little bit of texture and make each butterfly pop a little bit more. And this didn't take very long at all. I just take my uh, floss there and it's six strands and I just kind of un, un what's what's the word I'm looking for here unravel it into three so it's not super thick and then I'm just kind of going from butterfly to butterfly and stitching through the body of each one and it just adds a little pop just gives them a little more texture and I know they're not going to come off the page for sure now So here comes some scraps. These are from Illustrated Faith and Fresh Market. I wanted to kind of pull in some of the colors. That's an actual scrap from, I cut a cloud out and I saved the paper and I'm gonna use that. That is definitely qualifies, that definitely qualifies as a scrap. But I knew I would use it for something and I just can't throw this beautiful collection away. I don't care how small the scrap is, it's so pretty. So I want some black, I want some of the blue and some of the pink behind the photo. And I want it to be kind of crooked and, you know, not super straight. And so I'm going to go ahead and sort of attach these in a crooked fashion. And I'm recording this voiceover on New Year's Eve night. And there are fireworks going off all around me. So if you hear loud shots or kabooms that's what that is <laughs> and I love how the big lovely looks I love that pattern paper and the words it's just it's really fun to cut those out and use those as a title 
Okay, so now I'm going to come in with some thread and I've got the coordinating colors that are in the butterflies. I'm going to add a little bit of green over to the right. And then I'm going to come in with some stickers. This is a sticker sheet from Color Chaos and from She Blooms. I'm going to add a little bit of this red border scallop sticker just to bring in some red down there at the bottom. And I just pulled out anything from these collections that I thought might go. These are some of the little phrase and word stickers that up there at the top says weekend fun and then this little arrow life documented. And then these are all of the little, the little bits stickers from different collections. And this one says summer. That's from Fresh Market, I believe. And all of these are from Color Chaos. And they're just all different colors. I'm just pulling little pieces here and there. Stickers with hearts and the colors that I already have on the page. And I'm going to come back in with some thread. I need some pink. So I'm going to add a little bit of pink over here to the left. And then I'm going to make sure that all that is glued down. And even though these are stickers, they do stick well, but when you use gesso, you might want to glue them down even though they are already sticky, especially the clear gesso because it's gritty and nothing really wants to stick to it. So these are the Trinkets stickers from Color Chaos, and they just match. That's one thing I love about Bella Boulevard is so many of the collections look like they all go together because so many of the color schemes coordinate and they match and you can do a lot of mixing and matching. So I'm going to bring in some of the Illustrated Faith homespun alphas and mix them with some orange tiny text and get my title down there, Lovely Summer Day. I just kind of went with what would go with lovely and I wanted some green, some orange and pink. So I'm going to add a couple of more of uh, the butterflies down there. So I get all my colors represented below the picture. And then finally glue that down. I did add a little bit of journaling and a little bit of stitching and I added the date and that is it. So I love how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So make sure you check out your old pattern papers. You may look at them differently now than you did back when the collection was new and you may see it in a whole different light. Like when I've looked at this butterfly paper many, many times and today was the first day that it actually jumped out at me and said, hey, fussy cut these butterflies out and it has a totally different look. So. Look at your papers and see what you can come up with. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.